Yes, we're still here. <laughs> One of these days, <laughs> we're going to praise out of here. <laughs> we're going to worship right out of here, man. Woohoo! Glory to God. How's everybody tonight? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, we want more. Oh, praise God. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-oh. Would you turn to Romans chapter 12, please? Romans 12, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Amen. Let's speak the first couple verses. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you what? Present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or your responsibility. Amen. Amen. This is your response. You know, let me tell you something. When you don't, when you don't do this every single morning and every day, then you're trusting in you and not him. Amen. You haven't exchanged yourself for him. Does everybody get that? Uh -huh. Then what you're doing is actually dressing yourself with the full armor of God in vain. Does everybody understand that? See, there are things that the enemy likes to do because he loves to interrupt so that we do things in vain. We're supposed to outsmart the devil. He's not supposed to outsmart us. Because he was in us as the one that created him. Snap. So we're to present our spirit, soul, body, flesh, desires and possessions to him as a living sacrifice every day every morning other than that then you're accountable and responsible for your own stuff verse 2 do not be what conformed to this world here it is don't be conformed to this world don't think the way the world thinks don't fight for what's not yours That's another thing. To know what battles you're supposed to battle. Do not be conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Transformed by renewing or rethinking another way, not of this world, but of a world in the future. Amen. Amen. Listen, you're going to have to get in tonight, okay? <laughs> Praise God. Revelation 1. Well, we have to rethink. We have to, another way, we got to begin to refocus. Revelation 1. <clears throat> in verse 4. John to the seven churches, which is in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. All at one time. How powerful, isn't it? <laughs> And from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, a faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us, washed us from our sins in his own blood, and he has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. 
even so, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. The Alpha and Omega meaning the first and the last. In other words, he was before time, <laughs> who is time, who is at the end of time, amen, who upholds time, who is time. He holds it all, past, present, and future. So in other words, out of eternity is established a time. So there is no difference from past to future or from future to past in Christ. For you and me, in this realm, it's called back to the future. Everybody got it? Everyone say back to the future. And we don't need no uh, DeLorean. Amen? We need the Spirit of God. Jeremiah 1. We tried to build one, but it didn't work. <laughs> Just still goes forward. That's what's well, going to the field. Anyway. Jeremiah, chapter 1. Is everybody there in verse 4? Back to the future. <clears throat> oh, hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 4, let's speak it. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I what? I knew you. Woohoo! That means you were with him before he formed you. Before you were born, I what? Sanctified you. You were already preset apart unto him before you even came. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Of course, we know he's talking to Jeremiah, but he's also talking to me and you because the spirit of Jesus is known as the spirit of prophecy, the testimony of Jesus. Then I said, O oh Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Now, is that powerful? Now, watch this. Let's go a little further. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. This is, he's telling you this. See, I have this day set you over nations and over kingdoms. To what? Root out and to what? Pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Has everybody got that? Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, Jeremiah, what do you see? And I said, I see a branch of an almond tree. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. I knew you before you were. <laughs> Again, we were with him before we came. The moment we were conceived, we lost all memory and we're trying to get back to the future. Because you are not, I are not from the past. We are from the future. Our carnal mind has a hard time with those things. Because we've been brought up in a life of time. We've been brought up in a life of short-sightedness, not able to see things all the way through. We've been a, brought up in a life of false identities that has prevented us from really knowing who we are, but we are from the future, and we are going back to the future. We are not of this world. We're only passing through. God sent me and you to try and grab as many souls as we can to come back. Glory. Revelation 21. In this realm, we age. Mm -hmm. 
the out, outside, the old man ages. But the new man gets bigger and stronger every day, trying to pop home. Say, let me out. I don't belong here. Revelation 21, verse 1. Would you read it? Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. And then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things what? New. And he said to me, Write those words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the what? Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. And I give the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual immorals, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So we see that this, this is home that's coming. Does everybody get it? That's home that's coming. He says, I'm doing, a, 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 I'm, everything is becoming new in preparation. But this is future, isn't it? But actually, if you, we're actually, when you really think about it, we're constantly going, moving towards the future. Every day, every minute, every breath. Every second. You know, we get so entangled and busy about our little carnal affairs. What am I going to wear? What am I going to eat? <laughs> what am I going to do? How am I going to do it? Is this this? Is this that? Every one of these things takes time. So we're burning time up. But while we're burning time up, are we doing God's will or ours? Because see, once something is burned, it's sealed, it's done. You can't change it. Somebody got that? Only he can go to the past and change what needs to get fixed. You and I can't. Second Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be what? Burned up. So time will be burned up also. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, looking forward to these things, be what? Diligent to be found by him in peace without what? Spot or and blameless. And consider that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation is also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given to him, has written to you. As, all, as in all of his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which untaught and unstable people twist, to their own destruction, as they do also the rest of the scriptures. You therefore, beloved, since you know this beforehand, beware lest you also fall from your own steadfastness, being led away 
with the heir of the wicked, but grow in what? Grace. Grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to him be glory now and forever. Amen. All things will melt away. Time will burn. Everything in it. Oh, it's going to allow us to go back to the future. Has everybody got it? There'll be no more hold. Ephesians chapter 1. See, you desire to go home. You may not, it may not be in front of you all the time, but you desire to go home. And, and listen, so in that, we desire to bring home to us until home brings us home. <laughs> So in that, we want to bring home to us. Glory. In verse 3, Ephesians 1, verse 3, let's speak it. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before what? Before the foundation of the world. He chose us in him. Before we were even born, we were already in him. That we should be what? Holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to the adoption of sons and daughters by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the, in the beloved. In him we have what? Redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. That in the dispensation and the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. Before the foundation of the world, we were predestined. We were already in him. He already knew you and me. This is called the hope. It's a hope of glory. Knowing this. Why? Because you've been accepted. You've already been accepted. In this, many children are lost because they reject the acceptance of God. They reject who they are. They reject their identity. Their identity is in what they build and what they work and what they do. Their identity is in the talents. Their identity is in the buildings of their hands. Their Does everybody understand this? Amen. It is not in Christ. And that causes a person to be disconnected. Does everybody got it? It causes a person to be what? Disconnected. Even though they think they're walking in God. They're disconnected. In John chapter 1. In verse 1. Back to the future. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, and darkness did not comprehend it and still doesn't. So that's when a person is full of darkness. They just don't get it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all through him might what? Believe or what? Follow. He was not the light but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. That light is known as your spirit. 
He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. Now, I want you to grab hold of something. It says that he is the light, but every man that comes into the world has a light. That light is in spirit because God is light, God is life, and God is spirit. So he took a part of his spirit because you were already in him. So he pulled you out, pulled you out, and sent you into the earth. He pulled you out of him. The word says Jesus was in the bosom of God. So were you. Because you were with him then. Has everybody got this? And because he's not bound by time, he was past. So, see, he speaks in a language you and I can comprehend because we're bound in the arena of time. So his language is different in this realm to me and you compared to it is when we're out of this realm. Even Paul was taken to the third heaven and said, whoa, what the snap? <laughs> These words that I'm hearing are just phenomenal. I don't get it. Hallelujah. It says, he came to his own and his own did not receive him. The ones that he sent into this realm. Can you imagine? He sent us into this realm. And the one who sent us, who we were, who we were with before we came here, they said no. They said no. I want to do my will, not yours. See, I'm trying to, how oh, I can explain this. Because we were with God there's attributes that we know about him as God. Mm. Grab hold of this. So that's why people are still trying to play God in this realm. Amen? Does anybody, see, we know the attributes of God because we were with him already. In fact, we came from him. So we know the attributes. So in this, people are still trying to be God in this realm and not serve the one that, get, that created him and sent him. So they rejected him and said, I'm good enough, I'm God. Because they carry the attributes of God, but they're not God. Mm. Everybody Okay. Again, but as many as received, as many, uh, uh, and he came to his own, and, and his own did not receive him, but as many as received him, to them he gave the right to be returned. <laughs> he gave him right, he said, come on, let's get back to the future. He gave the right to become children of God. See, the other ones don't have the right. Because you got to be connected back to the one that created you to have the right. And that right will produce righteousness. As many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God to those who follow him or believe in his name. Who were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of men, but of God. In other words, you are reconnected. You are set forth back to the future so that you can live from the future to the present. Until, so what we're trying, we're just waiting until everything catches up. Amen? We're just, we just, we're, we're, see, everything is still moving. Everything moves. But see, time is closing. See, so if time is closing, that means we're getting closer to the future. But even though everything is still moving, even the future is moving, everything moves because God's word never sits still. It is constantly moving. That's how it upholds everything. But what will delay your closeness and your move because the enemy loves to interrupt. Sin delays. It's like running out of gas. It's like a car that breaks down and you can't get to the 
point where you need to get to. It's like getting in an accident on the way. There's an interruption. Does everybody get that? So the enemy tries to distract us and interrupt us. So he sends all kinds of things that he knows will distract us or interrupt us or cause us to look at our own hands. To be fulfilled in what our hands do instead of what he's done. So we all right. <laughs> Glory. Again, the light is the spirit. God is spirit. You and I came from the light. That's why the word says it's so powerful. It says, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Amen. Thy kingdom come is bringing the future of the eternal kingdom into the present time. Thy kingdom come. It's not about a building showing up. Amen. Thy kingdom come. The attributes of his eternal kingdom. Making a way for the tabernacle for God to dwell and reign in each and every one of us. Because the kingdom is nor here nor there but within us. Because the kingdom is from the future. Are you getting this? So what's he doing? He said, come on, bring it all. Bring it all. That's why we are known as the body of Christ, so the kingdom can be expressed through me and you. So we are driving out darkness. We are driving out deception. We are driving out sickness. We are driving out lies. We are driving out everything that would try to interrupt. We are driving out lust. We're driving out lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride, arrogance, haughtiness, rebellion, stubbornness. We want to drive all of these out because they interrupt and slow the process down in an individual's life. And, but in the physical realm, in the natural realm, we call that going around the mountain. And people don't even know that they already started going around the mountain. Because of the decisions that they made, because of unacceptable influences that they had accepted, because they liked their hands. <coughs> Listen what the Spirit says. Romans 8. Romans 8, verse 16. Murabunko. <laughs> <clears throat> let's speak it please Romans eight sixteen. the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God man we need that constantly don't we <laughs> he always wants to bear witness and when you acknowledge the spirit of God the Holy Spirit he acknowledges you as child son daughter he, re he reminds you of your identity the lack of connection causes you to drift from your identity and then you look for something else to fulfill your identity the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit light to light Has everybody got it that we are children of God and if two lights come together it gets brighter doesn't it mm. and if children then what heirs will snap if we're heirs with Christ Look at, if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Well, listen, he's past, present, and future. So we're joint heirs. Amen? So we're actually, because we're joint heirs, we sit, he said, when he said we sit and we are seated in heavenly places, that's every place, past, present, and future, because we're with him. We are joint heirs. If indeed, if indeed we suffer with him, that we also may be glorified together. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time that I'm living in is not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us, which is eternal, no longer time. Hmm. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. Why? Because God created Everything out of the future. Grab hold. So all of God's creations is waiting for his children to be reunited 
into the future to take care of everything God has created. Mm. For the creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Now, are you ready for the next part? For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. Not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption, the return of our future body. So that our future, who we are, is reunited with our body that's from the future. It makes us timeless. Are, are you guys getting this? Amen. Cool. Good, you can explain it to me later. Amen. <laughs> Verse 24, for we are what? We are saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? Perseverance. In other words, endurance. We are pursuing. We are going after. We are pressing forward, no longer going back. Because we know the more we press forward, the closer we get. The closer we get. We are joint heirs, groaning for our redemptive bodies. <laughs> which is from the future. 2 Corinthians 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. I want to confirm this with you. For we know that if our what? Earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God. A house not made with hands. What? Where is it? Eternal in the heavenlies. It's waiting for me and you. Just hanging out there, floating around, waiting for me. What's snap mean again? Simple. In a simple moment. Be snapped out of here. Verse 2. For this we what? Groan earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is where? From the future. From heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent grown, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but what? Further clothed that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now, check this out. Now, who, he is who has prepared this uh, he, now, he who has prepared us for this very thing is God. Can you imagine that? Man, he set this whole thing up for me and you. He prepared it. He did it. It's done. He made the way. Everything's falling into place. His will's unfolding. For he who has prepared us for this very thing is God. Who also has given us the spirit as what? Guaranteed. So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident and yet well pleased to be, <laughs> be what? Absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to him. Why? Because everybody's going to appear before him. Nobody escapes that. Nobody. So we desire the habitation. We want future here because we're from the future. Psalm 17. Psalm 17. This may put a little bit of light on your identity. Verse 13. Psalm 17, verse 13. Arise, O Lord, 
Confront him, cast him down, deliver my life from the wicked with your sword, with your hand from men, O Lord, from men of the world who have their portion in this life and whose belly you fill with their hidden treasure, with your hidden treasure. They are satisfied with children and leave the rest of their possessions for their babes. As for me, I will see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake in your likeness. Glory. First John chapter 3. <clears throat> Back to the future. Hallelujah. First John chapter 3 verse 1. Let's speak it. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us because it did not know him. Beloved, now you got to think about something. So the people, remember he talked about that darkness can't comprehend because they're of the world. But you and I are not of the world because we're from the future. They still haven't been unplugged yet. Does everybody get that? They haven't been unplugged, so they're still here. So they can't comprehend what you and I speak. We have a different language. We have a different motive. We have a different intent. Everything is different from, uh, from me and you from those of the world. They don't get it. They do deeds to be recognized. We do deeds to glorify him. They do deeds to glorify themselves. And they don't understand you. Verse 2. It's, in verse 1 it says, Therefore the world does not know us because it, it did not know him. Verse 2. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be, but we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him, what? Purifies, Purifies himself just as he is pure. So your identity is not only in him, but is him. Is everybody all right? Amen. Psalm 1. Psalm chapter 1. Psalm 1. Let's speak this, please, starting at verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, the rebellious, nor stands in the path of sinners and liars, who sits in the seat of the scorn for perverse mouth, grumblers, complainers, and so forth. But his delight is in the law, which is truth of the Lord. In his truth or in his law, he meditates Day and night. In other words, listen, he resets his focus. He resets his thinking. He compares everything to what God says to compare to what the world says. So this word meditate means to focus. How many of y'all know what you focus on, you become? Your associations bring impartations. What you focus on is what you'll become. As a man thinks, so he is, right? And he says he meditates, he focuses these things on day and night, no matter where he is or what he's doing. He's constantly focusing on what God says and whether he's pleasing God or displeasing God. Verse 3, He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall what? Prosper. Prosper. But the ungodly, the rebellious, the st stubbornness, 
are not so, but are like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in judgment. That means the reward of God. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly or wicked shall what? Perish. They shall perish. See, there's a difference between wickedness and righteousness. Amen? He focuses, sets mind or thoughts on the Lord. On the Lord, whatever you're doing. Heavenly bound, not earthly bound. Always comparing those things. Look at I, I, Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26. Verse 2. Open the gates that the righteous nation which keeps the truth may enter in. Verse 3. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you, whose mind, whose thoughts is focused on you. They will be in peace all the time. Why? Because they know they're not from here anymore. They've been sent here, but they're not from here. Our focus is on him. You keep him in perfect peace whose mind is focused on the Lord because he trusts in you. So we don't lean on our own understanding. We trust in him in everything. We know that he unfolds. Amen? Has everybody got this? In other words, that's where the word talks about seek my face. Jesus said, seek my face, right? Seek my face. Why? He's asking you to focus on him. Go to Colossians 3. So if you focus on holy, you become holy. You focus on heavenly, you become heavenly. If you focus on anything else, you become it. Colossians chapter 3. Now it doesn't mean that you know, you'll be out working and doing stuff, but the Lord is always with you. So you're looking at him while you're doing your stuff. And you're inviting him in everything you're doing. You're maintaining contact. Colossians 3 and verse 1. Let's speak it. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind, focus on the things above, not on the things of the earth. In other words, you are setting things. You, you're, listen, the world cannot bring you contentment. Only God can bring you fulfillment. Verse 3, for you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, oh, this is beautiful. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him, where? In glory. Therefore, put to death your members, which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Why? Because if you focus on those things, it's going to interrupt. Amen? It will interrupt. It will cause you to run out of gas or go down a wrong road. And you will be delayed. And let me tell you, when that delay comes, the enemy comes. Verse 6. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. And do not lie to one another since you have put off the old man with his deeds and put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who, is cre who created him. In other words, you are putting on your maintaining future presence. Amen? Where there's neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, 
nor free, but who? Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another, so that there's no interruption or delay. And if anyone has a complaint, put it in the garbage against another, even as Christ forgave you, you also must do. But above all these things, put on love, which is the bond of perfection. <laughs> Praise God. Psalm 16. Psalm 16. Verse 7. Everybody there? Let's speak it. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. So his focus is always on the Lord, isn't he? Again, what you focus, you become. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also rests in hope. Hallelujah. For you will not leave me, my soul in hell. Thank you, Jesus. Nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Always setting the Lord before us. That is relationship. Psalm 86. Back to the future. Psalm 86, verse 14. Let's speak it. O God, the proud have what? Risen against me. And a mob of violent men have sought my life and have not set you before them. Whoa. So he's saying these individuals do not set the Lord before them, become violent because they're fleshly, they're carnal. They don't know the Lord. So everybody got that? They do not set the Lord before them, but you, O Lord, are God, full of compassion and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in mercy and truth. Oh, turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servant. And save the son of your maiden. Show me a sign for good that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed because you, Lord, have helped me and what? Comforted me. What did he do? He was explaining. He goes, look at man. The ones that don't put you before them are violent. They're dangerous. They don't walk the same way. Why? Because they're not walking from the future. Their desire is here in the world. This is their life. This is not your life. Amen? Amen. We gave our life away in this world. We gave it away. Hallelujah. Why take it back? Amen. Nothing but a pain in a keister. <laughs> James chapter 1. So we want to use up this place and grab as many souls as we can to get out of here. I really believe that there's a amount of souls that God is trying to gather. I don't know the number. But I believe that there's a, a certain amount he wants to gather together before. That's why there's been, he's divine delays. But he's sure having some divine interruptions, isn't he? The interruptions of the enemy's camp, that's what it's about. They don't know what to do with us. We know what to do with them, though, praise God. James 1, 21. Let's speak it, please. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word... And not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man 
He was. His natural face in the mirror. He forgets who he is. He's focusing more on the natural, not realizing he's from the future and allowing his identity to drift. Amen. Verse 25, but he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. Powerful. Natural face in the mirror forgets the future of his identity and the perfect law of the Spirit drifts away. Is everybody good? Amen. I'm going to close at Matthew 24. This certainly shows whether you are a man pleaser or a God pleaser. Matthew 24 and verse 30. Everyone say, I'm the elect. I'm the elect. Well, you're, elect, you're the elect because you were with him before you came. In verse 30, then a sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. Then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branches have already become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, Know that it is near at the door. Surely I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. And we are that generation. Amen. We are that generation. We are watching things unfold. My goodness. The worst thing that can happen to anyone is to be successful in the wrong assignment. That's why it's important to connect, maintain connection. You're to battle, first strike every morning. Get dressed with the full armor of God, but what's the first thing you're to do? Surrender your spirit, your soul, your body, your flesh, your will, your desires, and your possessions to the King of glory. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. I ask the Lord that what has been imparted here will not only grow and bear fruit, but will constantly keep us in check in the arena, keep our senses sensitive with clarity and discernment, knowing who we are in you and who you are in us, waiting for the completion of our body that's hanging in the eternal closets, being ready to be released to us very, very shortly. So, Lord, we want to say thank you, thank you, and thank you for what you're about to do. Let us not miss what you're doing. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. <laughs>